And when the going gets tough here, just blame the White House, you say. No, blame Fox. While good, affordable health care might seem like a fanged threat to the freedom of the American people on Fox News, it turns out it's working pretty well in the real world. But does blaming us resonate with you, the voter? Chris Wallace, on that, next. There's a reason fewer Republicans, you hear them running around about Obamacare. Because while good, affordable health care might seem like a fanged threat to the freedom of the American people on Fox News, it turns out it's working pretty well in the real world. You know, when the president, when the president says like, stuff like that, he's not talking about us. He's talking about Chris Wallace. Yeah, absolutely. And we're taking the, we have to take this things in. We're going to blame you, Chris. He called you out yesterday, Chris. Listen, I, I, I don't know why anybody would be upset about that. It's, it's it kind of a badge of honor. First of all, I think it's fair game. We're big boys. Sure. Uh, we have been very critical of the president and Obamacare. Uh, and I think rightly so. It's not like we think there's anything wrong with our reporting. The president's trying to gin up his base uh, less than a month or about a month before the election. Calls us out. We should view it as a badge of honor. Well, you know what, though? But Fox News has been right. We've been talking about the problems with uh, Obamacare, and, you know, we just uh, crossed another uh, landmark. Look at this, a new Fox News poll. 54% of people in the United States wish it had never passed. Well, yeah, I mean, it's still controversial. But, uh, you know, the people, I suspect, that were in that room with the president don't feel that way. I suspect they like Obamacare, sure. and a lot of them don't like Fox News, and so he took a shot at us. I, you know, we're big boys and girls. We can take it. Yeah, I just sure. didn't think we belonged in the dialogue. Just, just tell me what you are, think. Are we at and the take presidential on the other level? Party. Yeah, Isn't he punching down? <laughs> Doesn't Vladimir Putin get under his skin a little bit more? Is he a little bit more upset with Bashir Assad? Oh, so ISIS. Stop. Stop being crybabies. My gosh. Yeah, I mean, I, I, but why I've been are we covering... in the dialogue, Chris? I've, I've... Why is Fox News in the he dialogue? He's a boogeyman. I, I have been covering presidents since the 1980s. If you, the only thing worse than being attacked by a president is not being attacked by a president. As I say, exactly. it's actually kind of a badge of honor. It is. All, All right. right. So let's uh, put that badge on. We'll sew it on during the break. Uh, let's talk about <laughs> Leon Panetta. You're he so is... thin-skinned. You, you <laughs> criticize the president for being thin-skinned, and you're being thin-skinned. Are you talking to me or Elizabeth? Uh, I'm actually talking, talking to all of you. Oh, you oh, are? Okay. no. I thought it was just Brian. <laughs> okay, fine. All right, so I didn't know. We live at 1601 Pennsylvania Avenue, and he's, we're right next to us. We're equal power. So let's talk about Leon Panetta. How surprised are you that he has gone out of his way in his book and in interviews to essentially uh, call out the president for not leaving troops in Iraq? Here it is. The president's team at the White House pushed back, and the differences occasionally became heated, and those on our side viewed the White House as so eager to rid itself of Iraq that it was willing to withdraw rather than lock in arrangements that would preserve our influence and interests. Those are the types of things that we have brought up in the past. So is he going to attack Leon Panetta tomorrow? I doubt it, but uh, that's a much more serious thing and good yeah. for Leon Panetta to tell the truth. I'm a little surprised that he would be that honest, but it completely uh, contradicts the, the Obama narrative, which he made as recently as in the interview on 60 Minutes on Sunday when he said it was all about al-Maliki, al mm -hmm. that it wasn't our decision, it was their decision, uh, which wasn't the truth. The fact is that the Pentagon wanted to keep people there. The White House kept cutting it down, and I don't think the White House, the number of troops we would keep there mm -hmm. after the Status of Forces Agreement in 2011, and I don't think the White House pushed very hard even for that small residue of forces. And you know, it just is crazy, the idea, that it, when the president said it was all Maliki's fault, mm -hmm. if we had had 20 or 25 or 30,000 troops there, do you think, and it threatened that we would cut off aid, don't you think we could have maintained some influence over the Maliki That's government? A common or, sense army? says so, right? But, I mean, they're still denying it. Their State, State Department spokesperson Jen Psaki was with Megyn Kelly last night, and Megyn Kelly had to sack Psaki with some facts. Take a listen. That is an accounting of what happened three years ago. That's just not consistent with what happened three years ago. We had basically won the war after those 175,000 troops were there. We had won. The, the vice president said that Iraq could go down as the administration's greatest success. Things changed after we did the surge in Iraq. We were doing much better. And then the, the president's critics say we snatched defeat from the jaws of victory because we pulled out the troops and there was no one there to protect the gains. But, Megan, are you arguing that 10,000 troops 
troops or 5,000 troops or 25,000 troops would have prevented, would have been able to fight back against ISIL when 150 or 175,000 couldn't have held back entirely al-Qaeda. It's not it Megyn Kelly doesn't... arguing it. It's Leon Panetta, who's in a much better position to know. He talks about how I voiced to the president that this country could become a new haven for terrorists to plot attacks against the United States if we withdrew all the forces. Isn't that exactly what happened? That is not what happened. And that is not the truth, Chris. Well, it, 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 see, Saki tried to do something very smart there. She said, well, are you saying that 10,000 troops could have defeated ISIL? That's not what Panetta is saying. What Panetta is saying, if we had had, and it wasn't supposed to be 10,000 troops, mm -hmm. it was supposed to be more like about 20 to 30,000 troops, and the aid, he's saying that if we had been much more muscular in our response yeah. to al-Maliki when the Status of Forces Agreement took effect at the end of 2011, of we could have had impact on Maliki, and we could have had an impact on sure. Maliki Leverage. to create a, an inclusive, let me finish, to incre create an inclusive government that kept, that kept the Sunnis inside, and also that uh, Maliki wouldn't have kicked out all the good Sunni generals and simply made it a Shia fighting force that would dissolve on first uh, contact with the enemy. So it isn't that the U.S. troops would have been there to fight ISIL, it's they would have been there to keep Nouri al-Maliki mm -hmm. honest, which didn't happen. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, meanwhile, as we look ahead, we, we think about our Sunday. Uh, you know, if you want to know... No, wait a second. Chris, are you finished? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm finished, finished, but you know, I mean, gosh, you asked me a question. Let me, let, me finish, answer, let, me let me answer the question. Yeah, that's all you're you answering. We were having a conversation. Me. Just throwing something in. I got a feeling on Sunday you're no, going to be I know talking. You, I know you. When you go, let me just say this, folks. When you say, right, yeah, that means get off the air. No, it just means I just wanted to finish my talk. Yeah. Chris, we have just eaten up all of the time for your plug for your Sunday show because right. you're We're going to be talking about Ebola. We're going to be talking about <laughs> the Secret, Secret Service. Service. We're going to have national officials. We're going to have a former FBI agent, Don Bongino. Uh, we're going to have a great Dan, show, and the Nationals are going to win the World Series, which is why I'm <laughs> wearing red today. Wait and a I second. think the Nationals should be America's team. They definitely could. They certainly have the pitching, Chris Wallace. There you go. Man, uh, we'll, he wound up. We'll look forward to watch. <laughs> or I'll get my I have a little wound up today. What can I say? That's okay. <laughs> You're entitled. By chef, by chef show, you'll be nodding off. Uh -huh. I know you, Chris. Well, no, by chef show, I'll be at the Nationals game. Oh, okay. All right. All right, Chris oh, Wallace, there. thanks. There we are. Red. Okay. <laughs> He's acting like he didn't realize he was just on TV for seven minutes. I know. <laughs> Why is hey, it look what I'm wearing. Yeah. Look what I put yeah. on this morning. Yeah. Why is it always sports Sunday? News time. I think I think I loves his baseball, doesn't he? All right. right.